Welcome to another episode of Glimpses of a Glorious Past, an informal history of the Lawrence School Lovedale. In the last episode, the 12th in this series, we saw the rocky start school had post-independence and reached 1949. Today, we will talk about the advent of Mr. K. I. Thomas in 1950 and how he began the transformation of school helped by a team of able staff members he put together. We will also begin a new series called The Stalwarts of Lovedale. The first of them is Major Ernst J. Nichols, the legendary Saji Nichols, who served in school from 1936 to 53. Isn't there something magical about Lovedale? If you've experienced life there, you will remember it forever. Wendell Sutton spent just one year at the Lorden School Lovedale, and that too in 1949, more than 70 years ago. Listen to what this 85-year-old from Perth, Australia has to say. I, I, I had a, a very good memory of the whole picture of everything for that year. That's the saddest part of my life. Well, that was the only year that I was, was in Love Tale. Oh, I see. Okay. I was in class five because, because that was the next step from class four in the railway school, promoted to class five. And uh, my brother John, he was in the junior Cambridge. Our names were, John was, uh, you know, we were never called by our first names. So it was, I was middle sub. My brother John was senior sub. And my brother Neil, who was a nap and Stanley, he was eight years old. Uh, sorry, he was 10 years old, and my, my sister was uh, eight years old. So we were very lucky to have had the, that one year, but believe it or not, what I learned in that year was something to, right up to this very day, has buried itself in my bones, you know. <laughs> it, it was Lovedale that I, I slept Lovedale, I ate Lovedale, I just, uh, to this day, I have so much fond memories of Lovedale. Sergeant Nichols was uh, living up, you know, and his, his quarters was in, uh, just outside the hammock uh, dormitory entrance. Okay. And of course, uh, knowing him, uh, he was not somebody that you could have a conversation with. He, he was very strict about everything. And all the discipline of uh, getting us up in the morning and uh, he, he his normal walk through the corridors, uh, you know, getting everybody up. But nobody, nobody would sleep back. Everybody was up to wash their you know, wash our teeth and get ourselves ready for... Uh, I was in the band, so we went down to the band room, but the, the others who would have to go the, do their PT and other things in the battalion. So it was like we were divided there in the morning. But other than that, the only times that we did meet Sergeant Nichols was when we had duty and uh, he, he didn't have much to do with that, or either he was uh, addressing somebody in the big hall. Uh, those that have misbehaved themselves, you know, he used to look forward. <laughs> we all used to look forward to that because there were a few of them that were for the naughty boys there. You know, I was I was twelve years old then. In 1950, they came to Lovedale, a gentleman who had an almost Padfield-like innings and impact of the school. Age 36, Kovur Ipe Thomas, or Kit as he was popularly known, held a master's degree in English from the Madras University, a diploma in teaching from the London University, and a B.Ed. from the University of Edinburgh. On his return to in India in 1941, he first taught at the Rajkumar College, established in 1868 in Rajkot for the education of the princes of Khatiawad. He later became the headmaster of the Sindh Madras Atul Islam, founded in 1885, and then a leading private school in Karachi in undivided India. In 1950, he took charge as the principal of the Lawrence School, Lovedale. For the next 21 years, Kit was the uncrowned king of Lovedale. Like the old buildings, he stood strong 
very much the external image of the school. Indeed, he was Mr. Lovedale to the world at large. With his diplomacy and charm, he fought off the tirades of a strong anti-public school sentiment prevalent in some influential quarters at that time. He enhanced the popularity and image of the school year after year until when he decided to leave in 1972, he had made Lovedale one of the most respected public schools in India. But when he took over from Dr. Lakhani in 1950, he faced several challenges. The government's stand on public schools, especially those inherited from the British, was ambiguous in those days. After being under the British rule for 92 years, the composition of the students was largely British and Anglo-Indian with very few Indians. The first recorded Indian pupil is Humayun Dhanrajgir, who joined in 1947. The quality of the teaching staff was about average for those times. But the school was strong in terms of non-academic staff thanks to two stalwarts who stayed on, Major Ernest Nichols, the military instructor, and Mr. Harold Victor Prince, the band master. Henry Lawrence envisioned his wards taking up manual trades like carpentry. Very few OLs progressed to a college education. Mr. K. I. Thomas joined as principal in late 1950. He was just in his mid-thirties. His task included two transitions, Indianization and converting a military school to a civilian public school. The school was always good at outdoor activities and shooting. In 1947, quite a few teachers left school. It was an opportunity to induct better qualified teachers. Mr. M. C. P. Thomas and Mr. P. Subronium joined at this time. The young K. I. Thomas naturally took some time to find his feet. In 1953, he made a big jump by inducting Mr. Vyas, who had an MSc in chemistry and was then a teacher at the Doon School. By the end of 1953, Kit was ready for the big leap. And thus came about the massacre of the winter of 1953-54. In February 1954, when we came back after the winter holidays, we were met by a brand new set of young, highly qualified teachers. Most of the old teachers were removed in one go. Kit announced in the assembly that the new teachers were young enough to play games with us. That, of course, was secondary. We certainly understood that the new teachers all had master's degrees and knew their subjects well. The 1954 crop of teachers included D.S. Babu, H.S. Sisodia, Mrs. Sisodia, D.B. Mathur, U.C. Srinivasan, Stanley Frederick, V.M. Matthew and a few lady teachers for the prep school. Two other stalwarts, W.J. McMahon, and Hari Harin joined a year later. The result was a quick and complete transformation 
of academic standards. The class of 1954 performed better than the previous class. The big improvement came with the class of 1955 onwards. Among the 1955 crop of OLs, we have college professors, doctors, an admiral, and a Padma Shri. This was easily the most important piece of work done by K. R. Thomas for the school. The next segment, the artist and the admiral, Shonali Chandi Chanaya, Champak, 1987. speaks to two famous ols from the class of 1955 about their time in lovedale they are childhood sweethearts and the first couple of lovedale as it were the renowned artist padma shri anjali ila menon ex champak and rear admiral k rajagopal menon ex aravli what i really have realized that once i was in lovedale is that our then headmaster uh, uh, kit thomas was very keen uh, that we should uh, project ourselves as what they call a public school uh, in the british sense and in the british sense public schools always had a headmaster so one of the reasons why he wanted to uh, change it to headmaster was because he wanted to be aligned with the british public schools and he became the head of the public schools uh, committee or pu- public schools uh, uh, there was a public schools of india Foreign. in which there was i don't think sindhya and uh, those schools were there but certainly doon was there doon always had a headmaster hmm. uh, sanawar always had a headmaster to provide context to their chat the principal was redesignated as the headmaster in 1953 prompting anjali to shoot off an angry letter to the editors of the laurentian well the first year i was there was fairly miserable because uh, there were very few we were only four indian girls among 50 girls and uh, the whiteies were jolly mean to us they called us dirty wogs and we were made to be punished and we were sometimes put in coventry and we had a very miserable year but once i started doing well in school i earned a little respect and especially because i did well in sports they didn't uh, think these uh, indian kids uh, um, western kids that were there the anglo indians and the british didn't think much of academics hmm. but since i did well in sports i gained a little respect and uh, i began to love school but what really was a wonderful part of school was uh, the art department uh presided over by somebody called Sushil Mukherjee mm. who was really a man of many parts he was a poet he was a musician he produced wonderful plays and he was a great art master and the art school was very beautifully appointed with little desks uh, on we had to set sit on mats on the floor and then Mukherjee would stay in his little uh, caboose and play on the flute while we painted from glimpses Well Kevin Phillips recalls a mock UN assembly for the students. K Rajgopala Menon heads the Soviet Union delegation. K Thomas Chandy and I his sidekicks. When the American delegate gets up to speak, Menon removes his Soviet team from the hall amid boos from other delegations. Who was very interested in what I spoke and how I spoke was my housemaster. Yeah. Subu. Okay. And he might well have put me up to it. To, but to do the walk out to stay to yeah walk-out. the walk out ah because uh, if i remember right the soviet union delegation was famous for their walk outs in those days ah. in the middle 50s once i won the prize and once or twice raja won the prize he was a very good speaker uh, and i also remember that he was in he played the flute in the band Yeah, in the band, they used to be called to the government house in Uti to play yeah. for the Maharaja. And uh, once, uh, and that was his uh, uh, symbol of love, that he brought me a piece of chicken curry in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> a piece of 
piece of chicken from the curry. From uh, with all the curry and, and the, everything oh in his pocket without even wrapping it in a napkin. Really, Mickey? Do you remember this? The chicken uh, curry. Vaguely. <laughs> But a little more clearly than the Russian debate, obviously. Yeah. Our thanks to Anjali and Raja Menon for this charming interaction. And for the video, we'd like to thank Shonali Chandi Chanaya. Fun fact, she was head girl in 1987, 32 years after her illustrious aunt Anjali. With this, we come to an end of another episode of Glimpses of a Glorious Past, an informal history of the Lord and School Love Day. Thank you for watching.